Hello, I'm Joshua Delisle, the designer blacksmith, and welcome to the Longhorn build. I want to say a quick massive thank you to everyone who's purchased the designs for my other sculptures so far. It's because of you that future builds like this will continue to happen. And if you're new to these and you'd like to purchase one, I leave links in the description below. Do read carefully the description of the item you're purchasing because there will be instructions on how to download and what you should expect. So what I've used here today is 1.5 millimeter mild steel and I've had it all laser cut for me using the DXF files provided. But you could very easily cut these out yourself with a pair of electronic shears. And how you would go about doing that is you would use the PDF and you would print out to scale, 100% scale. That would give you lots of pages that you would have to then splice together with either sellotape or glue. And then you can use that to cut out and place on your steel that you can then cut out with your shears. That is a cost effective option if you've got the time. <laughs> And for your benefit, I've put chapters in this video so you'll be able to find exactly which part uh, you need for yourselves, uh, whichever bit you're at, you can find that very quickly. And so without further ado, let's begin. Let's begin with part a. If you like, part A is the wall mounting plate. This flat part represents the top of the head of the longhorn steer. Now I've experimented with these fixing hooks by making them triangular in shape. And basically when that's on a wall, you can easily lo locate it and it will center itself like so. The reason I put a flat at the bottom is so if you were to use this as a template for your wall, you can basically use that to draw a line on the bottom. You can get a spirit level to then get the exact centers and that will just hang exactly on the wall, very simply. Well, that's the idea anyway. Let me know what your thoughts are on it. So as before, make sure your bench is clean and flat, and we're gonna place part A like so on the bench. Next, we're gonna take part I. Now you'll notice on part I, you've got a long point and a short point. The short point is the very top, the long point is the bottom. So we're gonna place it on part A like so. So as you can see, to allow part I to match with part A, there needs to be a slight curve. And just by bending it ever so slightly, matches part A perfectly, like so. So I'm gonna put a bit of pre-bend into this, and then we'll start fixing it to part A. So you want your bend to be gradual, free of any kind of corners or flats. Uh, if it's over bent, don't worry as long as it's not too much, but we can then begin to tack it on. See, I've overbent mine, but that's okay. As I go along tacking it, I can push everything outwards. In fact, it makes it easier because the parts aren't in the way as I go along. So my first tack is gonna be just 10 millimeters from the edge. I think I'm just gonna clamp it down just to hold things steady for me. And I'm gonna have my tacks roughly 30 millimeters apart. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. A nice, consistent and even gap. And what I'll be doing to finish these is I will tack from this side, once it's all together, um, directly over the top, but making it quite hotter so it penetrates nicely. And then those will get finished back. So I'm gonna turn part A around now. So I'm comfortable when tacking the next uh, part of I on. Yeah, so to make sure part A remains flat, I'm now gonna lay a piece of angle line across it and clamp it down. And then once I've got part I and maybe some of the other parts on, I'll then probably will tack it onto the bench. But you could probably, if you don't have a removable plate like I do, you could simply tack a bar that is quite stiff on the back to keep it flat, or even utilize the fixing hole so you can screw it down to something or bolt it down. Now it's up to you, you might wish to mark each piece on exactly where you're going to attack it. So if you're gonna have a gap like I am, you're getting a, a consistency of gaps, if you see what I mean. So uh, I might do that on the other pieces. I'm not too worried, uh, too worried about this one, but I will watch carefully where I'm putting the tacks as I go to see that they are kind of mirroring each other in the same places. So as before, I'm gonna pre-bend I and then start tacking it on.
until you have something that represents that. So now that I've got part I on, I'm going to proceed to tack it to the base and I'm just going to put maybe four or so tacks very lightly, making sure I can get in with the grinder after, probably on the edge of where I've already tacked it before so I'm not compromising the rest of the design. And I'm going to put a block on to clamp it down just to make sure everything's flat when I do. Just like so. That will keep everything nice and flat so when it goes onto the wall it sits comfortably. So the next part I'm introducing is part C, which is the chin if you like. Part C is going to go at the very bottom of part A like so. But first part C needs a bit of a bend. So just going to put a nice gradual bend, nothing very steep because it will, it's actually a very shallow bend really. Something a bit like that. And now parts I, when they finish, they're going to start, they're going to finish at the end of the radius here. So here's the actual chin line of the steer itself. And parts I will finish directly where that transition happens. So you'll also notice that parts I need to come in. Now, believe it or not, they do need to kind of twist in ever so slightly. So I'm going to bear that in mind when I start doing it, but that might be something I'll adjust a bit later as the other parts go on. I'm going to lean it forward and then start to bring parts I and working on either side until I reach the very tip. So as I'm setting this up now, I think one tack directly in the middle on part A is all that's needed to begin with. Right, I think it's time to work on part B now. So at the back of part, part B, that will actually fix to part A, like so. Um, but this is optional, but um, it's going to bend. See where these two, two kind of corners here are? It's going to actually bend, and if we put it on, if we're putting it onto the ball's head this way, it's going to bend in this plane. Um, so the idea was, if you were to just simply bend it once it's once we've welded it on you can just bend it in position and it will create a kind of a nice radius which is what balls naturally have on their heads um, or if you find that you struggle uh, getting a bend to be consistent there then there's a, another way of doing it where we can score a line with the grinder I think I think that's what I'm going to do I'm going to score a line just with the grinder now and all I'm going to be doing is just going scoring a line almost like a, a third of the way through. So I'm not cutting all the way through and I'm being very careful about it. Uh, but it just means that when I do bend it, it will be very, very easy. Otherwise, if you've got a folding machine, you could uh, you can definitely pre-fold this, um, but we can bend it by hand in position if needed to. So to do it, I'm just gonna take a straight edge. I'm gonna align it on those two corners and I'm gonna use a scribe. and score across. And then I'll use a one millimeter cutting disc to take it a third of the way through and then it will bend in that place. So there you go, there's my score line. And the score line I'm going to place in the inside. So when I come to put part B in, the score line will be disappeared on the inside of the sculpture. Now we're not gonna bend anything of part B yet. This is actually gonna remain completely flat on the back here. Where those corners are is where part I finishes. So you can see part I needs to bend, but not part B yet. I'm gonna begin by tacking it into part A, and then as before, we're gonna bend part I to match. We're going to swiftly now move on to part J. Now you may have noticed that part I has changed very slightly for those who are hawk-eyed among you. 
Um, that's because something didn't quite translate in the drawing, so I've amended that now, so you won't have this issue. But basically, part J attaches there, like so, and the spiky bit falls aligned with the other point and part I. So I'm going to tack it here, see where it aligns there. This space here, this square, is for the horns, and the diamond shape here is for the ears. So there's a little bit of shaping that happens along this part of part J, where it forms the eye socket. But until then, I'm happy to just tack it on here first. So once you've installed parts J, they should kind of taper out the side, so this curve here on the jawline continues straight up. So we're going to keep bending these until they meet the corner here of part B. Uh, but rather than bend it on where we've welded it in that plane, we're actually going to twist it instead. So we're just going to bring it like that. And the same on the other side. And then eventually we're going to curve parts J a little bit like that. I might use a pair of tongs actually to just help me. It's a little stiff, even at 1.5 millimetres. And then where the socket begins just here, this kind of top triangle, if you like, where it goes all the way back to a fine taper, we're just going to put a slight roll on that as well also. So don't worry about being too accurate, just putting a little bit in there helps you for later on. Now I've bent part B down ever so slightly because I'm losing headroom here. But before we actually bend uh, B down anymore, I'd like to introduce part D. Part D is going to go on top of part C, like so. And it's going to bend round and finish at the, at the tops of part J here. So to get part D to fit part C, uh, we're going to just put some slight bending in this plane. So I'm just going to bend it like this. I'm kind of rolling it in a bit of a cone shape really, so you can see it's going to go on there like so. And I've purposely put a little transitional point on part D, that will align with the edges of part C and where part I joins it. So you want to look out for that little tiny transitional corner there, that's where we're going to index from. So I'm going to tag part D on now, looking at where it's indexed here. And then I'm going to start rolling the rest of these cheek parts until they match with part J. Okay, so before I continue fixing part D, you can see I've left this bit loose at the moment, um, part I still needs to shape enough for this to fit properly. Um, just so I know exactly what that shape is going to be for part D, I'm going to actually introduce part M first. So part M goes in this orientation, and you can see the uh, eye socket part here aligns with part J. So that starts at the very tip of part D, and makes its way to a little kind of corner part here. There's like a little transition section just here that you'll notice. So the very bottom of the lines are there. So I'm going to attach part M on first and then start to shape everything to match after that, I believe. Okay, so I've got M together. This side's come out really nicely actually, and you can see the way the socket aligns quite nicely here. However, on the other side, I didn't quite get it to align up, so what I think I'm going to do now is just cut all the tacks and reassemble it. Because it's really important that that lines up there. 
and I can see the divot actually where it's meant to align up down here and it's it's not matched that at all. Bit of a pain but um, this is why we tack lightly. So there you can see I've just quickly changed this now and that blends in together much better. That's aligned up here, it's aligned up there, which is what you want. So the next part I'd like to add is part L, and part L goes here like so. Part L actually has a bit of a, a hollow in it like this, so I think I'm going to actually shape it a little bit in the vise very first, by just sticking it in the vise and then just trying to create just a slight sweep in this plane. So here now you can see I've curved it in this plane here, I've kept this side straight, this is the side that connects to M. And the bottom I've also curved slightly as well, uh, but that will actually straighten itself slightly as I attach it to part D. The main thing is to make it match the curve that D's already got, and then pull it to meet uh, part M. Uh, but I'm actually going to stick it onto part M first, and then we'll push part D to match. Okay, so part L is looking quite good now. You can see how it kind of curves in here, very slight amount. It kind of defines the jaw and the cheeks. And what I found is that if, if it's not matching back here, it's normally something to do with this part here that needs to change. So every time I try to pull, pull back the jaw back over here, it was um, bowing and bending in this region here. So it does pull over eventually. It might take a bit of brute force and a, and a bit of a strength. Obviously, the thinner material you use, it'll become a lot easier. And uh, of course, doing a paper copy helps to see where all the parts need to be bent as well also. So to continue, I want to introduce part K. Now, part K is gonna go on part L like this almost like at a 45 degree angle with the sharpest point heading straight back towards part B. Um, but before we put it on, I'm actually just gonna just bend the end here. So this is the nostril zone uh, and that little triangle across here, I'm just gonna flick out ever so slightly. You'll notice a little transition point just there where the curve goes and then suddenly transitions very slightly just there. We're gonna bend that upwards not a lot, but it will help us. There you go. I've just put a very subtle flick on the end you see there. That's going to help marrying it up with part L nicely. But I'm just going to put it there, start tacking this side, manipulate everything to match, and then pull everything together. Now that we've installed part K, I'd like to then bring this top part down, this part B, to then start to create the brow of the nose. But if you've followed what I've been doing so far, you might notice a problem when you do so, as I'll show you. I'm gonna push part B down like so. You can see at this point, it's gonna bend over. But it would seem that we're almost 20 millimeters out at the top here. So just in case you guys are experiencing the same thing, you can see where part K sticks out here. That's meant to come all the way down here. And you can see up here, the edge of part B there is meant to come right to the end of part K there. So then we can start forming the nose round. But currently it's off. And you might think that the patterns are off. They're, they're not. What, what actually needs to happen is part B needs to go forward a tiny bit. And part C and everything connected to needs to go backwards a fair bit. And you're probably thinking, well, how, how will that happen? Well, what we'll need to do now is to widen it. Where part M is and all of this connecting tissue, if we widen that, that will actually bring everything closer together. So I'm going to try a few techniques now to correct mine and uh, this may help you.
Right, so that's worked. I used my uh, wind bags, which are something I've recommended in a previous video. I think they're just super helpful. Now, that's what they're designed for, prying things apart and lifting little things up. They've got a good amount of force to them. And then just using another clamp as well, just to help it. I also gave it a few taps with a hammer, and that just made any stresses in, um, in any of the tacks just kind of bend and release themselves. But part B, the edge where the funny nostril shapes are here, needs to come right up to the end of part K. I think I'm gonna tack it at part K now, and then I'm gonna start um, bending everything up at the back here to get everything to align. It's difficult when it's all loose, so I might just put a couple of tacks there first, and then I'll start pulling things around and manipulating a bit. Okay, so I'm going to start joining um, the eye socket here to part K. Uh, but I just thought I'd point out that because I've aligned part K and part B at the very top here, it's going to be pretty much smack bang on it down here. So to create that gap, instead of it being pulled away, which is what you'd normally find with other parts, I'm actually going to tuck it underneath to create that gap instead. That's if you want a gap, otherwise you can just pull everything nice and tight together. And as I'm going, I'm just kind of manipulating part B here and the eye sockets, uh, just using a pair of scrolling pliers. These are ones that I made quite a while back. Having these kind of dog leg reins means you get a lot more leverage when trying to bend things. And so now I think I'm just gonna attach part J to part B. Um, now part B remains flat and parallel and it all curves in that plane only. So the tricky part now is with part J is we've got to bend just this top portion here over in a nice kind of sweeping curve where the eye socket is to match the curve that is up here. So I'm just going to bend that over. I'm going to use my scrolling pliers again to do that. Trying not to distort this flat here because that's where the horn joins onto. That will bend over but it won't. You've got to be careful of that. So lastly now on this part I want part B to bend down and connect with parts D and L. Um, before I do that, I want to put a, ever such a slight curve on this. It's basically going to match the curve of part D here. Uh, so I'm going to put a bit of pre-bend in, just to help me. And then when we bend it down, it's going to bend more harshly where the nostrils, the top of the nostrils are here. And then it's going to gradually slope until it meets part D. But anyway, I'm going to use the uh, pliers again for that and uh, you'll see how it works. So that seems to have worked out quite nicely. Basically, the nose of this uh, bovine is a lot flatter than I um, thought it was. Uh, I guess I was stuck in the mode of uh, either the stag or the horse because they have a very rounded front nose, but a cow is very, uh, very flat nosed.
Okay, we're going to begin the ears now. You might have noticed that part I has uh, ever so slightly changed. That's because I missed some geometry when uh, turning it into patterns. Uh, so I've amended that now. You won't have that problem at all. But that's why it's important for me to build these things first so I can go through all the little difficulties and give you guys my best tips. Right, so to do the ears, we need parts P, Q, and parts O. Uh, we're going to start with part P. We're doing the Longhorn's right hand side here now. So the orientation of part P is going to be this way with the, uh, the sharpest point on the sculpture side is the top. So that's going to locate onto part J like that. And uh, rather than a corner weld, it's going to be a fillet or what I've referred to in the past as a, a lapping join. It's going to go over the top of part J. Because I'm welding it as a gap rather than flush fit, I'm going to just leave a little gap as well. So I'm going to put that there like so. And uh, it's probably going to come completely 90 degrees with part J there. So let's get that on first. If we look at part Q now, you'll see if you put part Q on the, the, this flat side here on a base, it'll lean over to one side ever so slightly. That side that it leans towards is to match up with part P. So you can see I've marked it here with a bit of pen just to help me. And that's gonna go onto part I at the very top, just there. So part O, you can see here, the side that it leans towards, if balanced on the flat plane, is gonna connect to part P. So that's gonna go there like so. So I've got mine leaning out ever so slightly because it makes it easier to get in there. So now using um, my pliers, I'm going to start bending Q and O outwards. Uh, I'm going to put just a little bit of curve in them like that, a bit of pre-bending. Now part, part P remains quite flat for this, but we'll see how we get on. So you can see I've just bent it just at the bases there, and then what I want to do is gradually bring those together. And you'll be able to see at the back here where they're coming together because of that pre-bending. I can get them to start to zip together at the back here. Now there's a lot of bending to go in parts Q and part O, and part P remains quite... Uh, well, I'm just going to push it out of the way for now, but that shouldn't change much. So I'll zip these together and you'll be able to see what to do next. So now for the best part, we're going to put the horns on. Now to make it helpful, because each piece looks very similar, um, I've labelled top, front, back and bottom on the included design. Now the best thing that I think is to do is to print this off 100% um, scale. So print it in poster mode and that way you'll get something like four A3 size pieces of paper or eight A4 pieces of paper that you have to then cut and splice together uh, using a bit of sellotape or glue. Uh, that way you can take each of your templates and you can correctly identify which is which. So I'm hoping that I've got these right, but we'll see. But as you can see here, the square, so what I'm saying is the top is obviously that one, front, bottom, back. And I'm gonna do one side at a time uh, and I'm going to basically tack all of the components on and then start to manipulate them into the shape of the horn. Right, so part H um, in this orientation, so looking definite horn-like, will go there like so. Uh, might have to bring it forward ever so slightly just so I miss the ear. So you can see the back part, part H, swoops down like this. Part E, the top, is going to go forward 
like that. So part G, the bottom one, also goes forward. You can see those top and bottom there pulling forward and the front and back kind of do this dip like that. Now I'm just going to bring the back part, just, I'm just going to twist him up ever so slightly just to allow this part to come in underneath. There we go. Might bend that down a bit. There we are. That's it. That's better. And then lastly, part F, the front part, is going to go in like that. So I guess at this point it looks like a load of tentacles. But essentially what I'm going to do now is like we did with the ear, I'm going to spiral my way around each piece, tacking as I go, twisting and bending until all of these faces match each other. So a quick time lapse and you'll see how one of these comes together. So there we go, it's all assembled now. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and sand all the tacks down and give the whole thing a general sand over, just a once over. Uh, and then I think for the finish, I'm actually going to go for a rusted look. So I'd probably leave it outside, let it go rusty. And then um, to stop the rust from bleeding thereafter, I'll seal it with like a wax. Uh, so what I'm going to do is cut it off the mounting plate and then I'll also go around and just check to make sure the gaps are equal. I want to make sure that when I put the lighting on the inside, that you're not going to get any funny, um, funny uh, dark areas. And so if you want to stick around, I'm going to be um, figuring out how to do all the lights on the inside so you can see that. You can see it all come together. you guys enjoyed that very much and uh, and that you continue to uh, enjoy future builds so do leave a comment in the description on uh, the different designs that you'd like me to do next and with your support I'll gladly do more right until next time happy forging a life worth living and see you in the next episode bye bye